welcome to Chefs and Show Homes. Today we are in Emerald Park Homes' latest show home in the Creeks on Wolf Willow Place. I'm also very excited because we have Nathan Guggenheimer here from Regina's newest restaurant, Avenue. Hi Nathan, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, Good morning. Thank Good morning. Yeah. yeah, thanks for being here today. Yeah, great to be here. It's yeah. a beautiful place. It is. Yeah, yeah it's a beautiful yeah, home. With a sick kitchen. Yeah, and yeah. we'll see the rest of that uh, in a bit. But first of all, we're going to get started on cooking. So uh, Nathan, tell me a little bit more about Avenue. How long have you guys been open? So we've been open about two months now and uh, so far so good. Everything's great there and what we're trying to do is just bring uh, using local ingredients but doing it with like global cuisine. So you might have a French dish, you might have something that's Vietnamese there but then we're using all local products just like what, what, uh, what we're going to do here today. I've got uh, local grains, uh, I've got these beautiful local mushrooms that just came through my back door so I've, I have uh, actually have mushroom pickers that go around and, and get me chanterelles and different little forged goods that they can and then bring them, bring them right to me. And these are blue melting caps right here, if you see inside there, they're beautiful. And then uh, local chanterelle mushrooms, which are also, these are known as like literally the best chanterelles in the world. They come right out of here, yeah, out of Saskatchewan. So they're both from Saskatchewan? Yeah. Perfect, and so what are we gonna be making? Uh, out of all this, we're gonna make a risotto. And then, so it's gonna be a grain risotto. Uh, and then we're gonna use a little bit of Diefenbaker trout. And, and top it off with a little beef and baker trout, some balsamic, local cold pressed canola oil. Awesome. Yeah. So what I'm gonna get you to do first here is grab a few of these mushrooms, okay. the blue melting caps, and you're gonna slice them up. You can take this stem off like this, and then this here, you're just gonna slice into little slices like that. Okay. So we're gonna open up the surface area of the blue there, and that's gonna start to come out when we cook them. That blue will start to spread out into the actual the, the oil or the butter that we're cooking them in. Okay. Yeah. So just grab maybe like that one, that one, and that one. Okay, perfect. Go for it. Should I slice this one more or is that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, finish that off. I got lazy there. I just, okay. I, yeah, that's awesome. what I do. Yeah. I'm better at delegating than I'm <laughs> actually doing it now, so. It's chef's job, right? Yeah, yeah. So how many um, chefs or cooks do you have working at your restaurant now? Um, right now we have about 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Throughout the whole day though, that's a, that's a yeah. whole, whole operation. And you guys are open for lunch, right? Yes. Okay. Open for lunch. We open at 11.30 a.m. for lunch and then close at 2.30 and then we open again at 5.30 for dinner and we open until, if we're busy, I stay there until 11 o'clock and I'll still be cooking. But if it's, if it dies out at 9.30 or 10, that's usually when we close the kitchen as well. So okay. we don't like to set an exact time on it because, you know, go with the flow. Right. Yeah. How we do things. So now what are some of your, um, signature dishes at Avenue? Uh, to be honest, this is one of them, the, the grain risotto with a Diefenbaker trout. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, another one would be, we do beef wellington. So beef wellington is like puff pastry wrapped up in prosciutto, mushroom duck cell, and then it's baked all in one, and beef tenderloin, baked all in one big giant, beautiful wellington. Yeah. Sounds It's a really, really cool. Yeah. Good. I'll check out this uh, cutting job I just did here. Uh, Any you can't YouTube? use that. I can't. Oh, it's all really? Garbage. It's all garbage. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's usually how my cooking goes. Yeah. No, do it's you perfect. use the stems too? Yep. Yeah. Actually, what I do is I, I make stock with the with the stems, and then that's what I add into the risotto. Oh, yeah. okay. So we'll so keep these aside. Side. Yeah. And then for these chanterelles, these ones have already been de-stemmed, so these ones you can literally just go. Just hack them up. Yeah. Well, I mean, hack wasn't the best word, but... <laughs> oh, that's not a cooking term? <laughs> Just like that. Okay. So perfect. they get a little bit of texture. Okay, awesome. Now, silly question. Yes. Um, I always thought risotto was rice, no? Yes, and I know I probably actually shouldn't be calling this risotto. Okay. I just, I cook this exactly like a risotto would, and it's used with grains from here. Okay. Right? So, it's, yeah, I know, because risotto is really the Italian, it's an Italian rice done with, or Italian risotto is a risotto, right? Made with okay. arborio rice. Yeah. So I do, I have to play on words. Okay. You, know? you could call it almost a porridge, I guess, if you will, because it's also made with grains and stuff like that, like a porridge is. But, okay. So yeah. is it more of just like the way it's cooked would be like the term risotto? That's how I'm sort of doing okay. it, yeah. And the fact that I'm, I'm finishing this off with like, with Italian ingredients like, like mascarpone and Parmesan and, and things like that. So once again, it's that play on local ingredients done globally or done, you know, so a little, little take, yeah. Okay. And thanks for calling me out on that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean it, like it's great. Like I didn't even, I should have thought of that to be honest. This is perfect, perfect. All right. Yeah. So now what? If you need a job, just let me know, okay? Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll see how this goes. So now we're, we can actually start sauteing all this uh, okay. in the pan back there. And then we're gonna, 
get our risotto going, and then once that's done, we're gonna get the fish on. Okay, okay? perfect. So, we're gonna get started here. These are the lovely grains that we're gonna cook, grains and nuts and seeds. Uh, in here, you've got stone-cut oats, you have barley, uh, you've got local farro and quinoa, and then pine nuts and sunflower seeds, local onions and garlic, and then of course we have our lovely chanterelles and our blue melting caps, which are our favorites. So what we're gonna start off with here is local cold pressed canola oil. You can buy this at co-op actually if you need to. This is, this is just like in olive oil. Like I love it and I've been supporting it and trying to push it to everyone because it has such unique characteristics that I, I you don't normally find in, in canola oil. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks of canola oil as like, the cheap thing that you use to, to, to cook fries in, right? Right. Uh, and then we're gonna get a little bit of a sizzle here. I don't want this to color, really. I just wanna get them... Get the juice ...sweating, going. and you get the aroma going, and everything like that. And then I'm gonna add, always whenever I start to cook something, I go a pinch of salt. Perfect. Turn that down. Now, um, you and some of your partners have uh, been on Top Chef Canada, yes. correct? Can you tell yeah. me a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Dale McKay was the first one. He is my business partner and, and best friend, partner, co-chef, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, he... Oh, I'm just going to tilt that for a second to get that off the heat. He went on the very first season of Top Chef and, uh, and won. And then I just went on last year, actually. And uh, I got fourth. I had a great time though. It was it was uh, more about sort of like making friends and seeing new people and trying something that I've never done before. Right, you know? just the experience. Yeah, exactly. I love doing new things. So. Yeah. And fourth out of how many contestants? Um, there was twelve to start. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Really yeah. good. And so now you guys own a few restaurants together, right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, this is our, our fourth restaurant now. So our first one was uh, Aiden. We all me. Uh, Dale McKay and Christopher Cho were all business partners and best friends, of course. Yeah. But we moved to Saskatoon about uh, six and a half years ago. Yeah. And From we Mexico. opened up, yeah, and we opened up Aiden. And then we have Little Grouse on the Prairie, which is our Italian one. And then we have Sticks and Stones, which is our Korean and Japanese one. Perfect. And then what would you say Avenue is? Is it kind of a combination of all of them? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Avenue's Avenue. It's um, one thing that the reason why we picked the name Avenue is because in Avenue, is always changing and evolving, you know what I mean? Like in any big city and stuff like that, it can be sort of, it's, it was said like to be almost like a, a gate to be anything it, it really wants to be, right? Right. So that's kind of why we picked that because then Avenue can be like, as long as we're using our local Saskatchewan ingredients, we can do kind of whatever we want in there, you know? Like right. I have anything from a, a, a sushi press to, um, to uh, merguez sausage, which is very North African, you know? Like it's, it, that's the fun thing, and that's what, what we what we love about that restaurant. Yeah, this so if you restaurant. haven't been to Avenue yet, um, beautiful food, casual environment, good people, good times, so definitely you have to check it out. All right, so what do we have going on here now? So I'm just sweating down the mushrooms a little bit here, and then a little bit more oil. And you can start to get the aromas of everything coming out now, right? And mushrooms soak up, soak up oil okay. like crazy. That's why I love them, because they get really fatty if you want them to. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now that this is sweating down and we, we can get the aromas and everything's, like if you really smell that, you can get the garlic, the onions, Sounds you get the good. earthiness from the mushrooms. Now I'm gonna throw in my, all my grains and seeds. Okay. And I'm gonna start to toast them in this, in this deliciously flavored oil. So they're gonna get coated by all that. I'm gonna turn this up a bit. You're turning up the heat. Yeah, I'm turning it up to more of like a medium high now. It just looks so beautiful. Yeah, I know, right? That's so gorgeous. Good. I know this isn't a risotto, but this is what I love about about cooking. There's no there's no really like right or wrong. Like this is just something that I completely made up, you know? Right. But yeah. it but as long as it tastes delicious, it's it it's there, right? Totally. And so now how do you know when it's ready to add the stock? So I'm actually gonna deglaze with a bit of white wine that we have here right okay. now. And I just what I'm doing is just sort of toasting these, these seeds quickly to get them coated with that oil and everything like that. And then okay. you deglaze with the wine. And then once this wine reduces down,
Now's when you really want to start stirring. And now you don't want this not to be boiling. So boiling the whole time. Yeah. And stirring constantly. Yeah, exactly, because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. Right. Because there's going to be so much. <laughs> it's going to be so much starch coming out of uh, all the grains and and everything that's in there, right? Right. So this comes down to what's called au sec, okay. which means that it's like it's not it's not dry, but it's not it's not completely. And then stop. And now, I just do a couple ladles at a time, and okay. I'm just gonna keep adding ladle after ladle. Like as this comes down, I'm gonna add another ladle just to keep it going. Okay. And this hard boil, and then everything's gonna be ready in about uh, 20 minutes, to be okay. honest. Perfect, and so how much stock are you putting in? Uh, this is gonna be about uh, two liters of stock. Two liters. I will have a recipe okay. for you though, I know okay. I promised you Perfect. so. Perfect, yeah, yeah, we will be offering the recipe for yeah. all of our viewers here. Um, so this is probably gonna take a little while to, uh, to cook down. So while this simmers, um, Lorena and JC are here to give us a tour of this beautiful show home. So uh, we'll be back with the house tour. Perfect. <laughs> I'm down here with the design team from Emerald Park Homes. I'm here with JC and Lorena, and they're going to give us a house tour and tell us a little bit more about their homes and the building process. So, uh, Lorena, tell me a little bit more about your company. Well, it's a great, pl great place to start is in the basement because the most important part of the home is your foundation, especially in the Regina soil. We want to make sure that we have structural slabs, structural foundations, and we want to build above building code. We want to make sure that this home is still standing for generations to come. Like Mike Holmes, the Home and Garden TV um, celebrity, tells us all the time, do it right the first time. And that's what our goal is. When Gary started the company uh, over 25 years ago, he was in the concrete business for many years. And he saw what other builders did, and he said, I can do it better. And that's where when Emerald Park Homes started. So in this house, we definitely have the structural foundation. We have the wall tight spray foam, which insulates the home. This is a homes approved product. Every year we go to the international Builders show in Orlando and Vegas and meet up with Mike Holmes and his research team. They show us all of the new innovative products that are out there on the market and tell us what we should be using to make sure that our home is inspected by the homes team and passes all of the inspections. That's incredible. And so you guys are Mike Holmes approved, is that right? Yes, we're the Regina's first homes approved home builder. Amazing. And so then you guys are always keeping up to date with all of the new technologies that are coming out from those, those show homes. Is that right? Absolutely. That's what we try and do. There's no sense trying something that hasn't been tested and tried and true because you just run into problems. And so then all of the contractors work together with your clients and you guys to yes. build them their perfect custom home. Yes. And so what kind of timelines are people looking at when they build with you guys? Well, it really depends on the size of the house. If it's your three bedroom bungalow, we're looking at eight months to a year depending on how quickly people make up their mind and make their decisions on choices for flooring, light fixtures, all the wonderful stuff. So if you want to go on a year-long shopping spree, this is the way to do it. Right, and now you guys mentioned Pinterest is kind of your best friend when um, planning all of this and getting started, is that right? Yeah, it really helps our customers figure out what they want to do with their home. A lot of people, you have so many options and it's just a really great place to look we have you know folders that will show them everything if they want to look at fireplaces if they need kitchen designs it's great inspiration for sure no that's great all right well should we see the rest of the home then yes i'd okay. love to show it to you awesome i'm excited let's go let's go welcome to our master bedroom and ensuite this is gorgeous the nice part about this is we have speakers in the wall, so you have your zoned audio, you also have your zoned heat. If you want to keep your master bedroom cooler or warmer, you have the choice right on your own thermostat. And That's how right. do you find that with, with sound? Um, is that an issue at all? Uh, we haven't heard any issues yet. We do a lot of uh, rocks all in between the walls, so 
bedrooms, bathrooms, depending on what people want. Okay, perfect. And now you have quite the exquisite ensuite as well, so should we check that out next? Yes, it's spa-like. Very much, okay, lead the way. ensuite. It's nice and spa-like with our heated tile floors. We've got a freestanding tub with a floor mount tub filler that really adds to it. Okay. And then a nice chandelier over the tub. I love all of the different colors. Um, I know in Swedish, uh, or Sweden, sorry, <laughs> light therapy is really in right now. So uh, get really zen in your tub and your space. Yeah, it really adds to it when it's nice and dark in here. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, if we come over here, you can see all the storage we have. So we have this tower in between the two sinks with a ton of storage for all your towels. And then we have these two unique pullouts to keep everything tucked away off of the counter. This is a dream in terms of like curling irons and, and straighteners all over the counter all of the time. I love this. Oh, and then you've got the little plugins right there. Yeah, Super handy. Plugins. Nice and accessible. And we're seeing this a lot with the double sinks in the masters. Everyone likes to have their own space. Yeah. And the white on gray is really nice too. It's just so clean and fresh. Yeah, and then uh, how about this tile shower? So this is, we did a custom tile shower in this house just to make it fit where we wanted it to. And we've got these nice little niches for your shampoo. And then the shower head is a nice rain head out the top. And I love all of the little touches of like crystal and sparkles in here. Yes, there's a lot of bling in this. Yeah, bling, bling. Beautiful, beautiful job. Gorgeous. We're going into the walk-in closet of the master bedroom right now, which is attached to the ensuite and also to the laundry room to just make organization so much easier for the homeowners. Yeah, that's perfect. Our laundry hamper. And right next to it is our laundry room to make it very convenient to get all of your linens and towels washed. And I love that it's a full laundry room too. You know, in a lot of these newer builds, it's kind of right off of the garage and maybe not so convenient. And you're running into each other as you're trying to do laundry and right. dirty boots on top of your, your clean stuff. So this is a great um, idea for sure. Right. These yep. cabinets are located conveniently in the laundry room with the sink so you can do your soaking and uh, stain removal right on site. And so much storage too for all of your products. So they're not just hanging out on the counter on top of the dryer, collecting Close. lint. <laughs> yes. Amazing. And so now the bedrooms. This is one of two identical children's bedrooms with their own walk-in closet lit up. Lots of room for toys and of course their clothes. Very smart feature to have in a home. And great that both bedrooms are identical to eliminate some of the fights anyways. Sibling rivalry. Yeah, exactly. And now you said too, um, this bedroom is ready for sound as well? Yes, it's also got the audio zoned in and it also has cable hookup as well. Oh, perfect. Very convenient. And then, so I guess finishing off this top floor, we just have another main bath. Yes, the children have their own bathroom to share. The parents have their own. And so everyone has their own neat little place. Great, I love this floor plan. I think it's very smart for a large and growing family. Thank you very much. And every executive home needs a grand entrance like this one with the beautiful light fixtures sweeping down from the ceiling adorning this beautiful custom design staircase. Speaking of staircase, um, I'm going to head downstairs and see how Nathan's doing in the kitchen. And uh, I hope you ladies will join me um, down there and we can talk a little bit more about the features of that beautiful kitchen and, uh, and try what Nathan has prepared for us. Mm, I can't wait. Okay, hi. Hi. So welcome back to the kitchen and I've got the cold pressed canola oil here, a hot pan okay. and we're going to do a fish fry. Perfect. We're going to start cooking up the beef and baker trout and I know the last one I said medium heat. This one I do want to see a little bit of actual smoke on this because you need this touch of smoke to get it so that this skin doesn't stick to that pan because I know that's what everyone's fear is. You know everyone always always makes their fish fish thick. Even, even at my restaurant I still have to yell at my cooks. So you want to have a nice, the, a nice consistent heat on there. Okay. So once it starts smoking, it's not quite ready. It has to smoke for at least, I'd say about eight seconds before you can really get it going. We're going to give it a nice swirl to make sure that all the oil is evenly heated. 
and then this is just gonna go right there like that. And then I'm gonna give it a few seconds before I add the next one so that I don't cool down the pan too quickly. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with the next one. The other thing is I'm using a big pan for this because if you, if you start with a really small pan and put this in there, as soon as you put that on the pan, that it's gonna cool down the pan and then that fish is gonna stick every okay. single time. And now I'm just turning, now I can turn this down a touch and I'm gonna push this slightly down on the pan just so the center of that skin starts to get to that surface area and then it's gonna to start to relax and get crispy all the way around. Okay. And now you said this is a local trout, right? Yes, it is. It comes from Beef and Baker, Beef and Baker Lake. Beef and Baker Lake, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful fish. My favorite. Okay, and the risotto here, okay. nice and cooked. You can see everything's bloomed. It smells delicious. Yeah. This is just, I've just got it down uh, fairly low because okay. I just need this to sort of Finish hot it. enough. Yeah, exactly. Just to stir in all these last minute flavors that I want in here. And you, you can add in all kinds of different things like herbs and peas and whatever, Okay. which I have here. This is my, my green puree, or it's a little bit of herb and a little bit of uh, vegetable tops. Mm -hmm. I love using like, um, uh, like carrot tops and beet tops and uh, radish tops all kinds of things like oh. that. I actually take the tops off and I blanch them and I puree them. And then it makes this beautiful puree that that tastes like something else that you haven't had before almost, right? Okay. But it's, it's fabulous. So, I mean, if you want it at home, like if you're not, of course, not gonna do all that. You just literally can chop it all up and put it in, same thing with herbs. You can bunch of basil, parsley, um, tarragon, dill, whatever you feel underneath. You see how nice and easily that, that slides? Okay. That, tells you it's that ready skin to go. is nice and getting nice and crispy. Okay. Give it a touch. And then a little bit of lemon juice to finish the risotto. Give it a nice acidity. And then we're going to grate in a whole bunch of parm here. I love the colors in this. It's so beautiful. Touch more of that. Okay, and then I need you just to do a quick taste test for me. Okay. Go for it. Salt, pepper, mm. Mm. lemon? I don't know, I think it's perfect. Okay, let's see what I think. Yeah, let's see what you think. Yeah. I think it's delicious. Oh God, that's horrible. What? Just <laughs> No, good, perfect. Perfect. I'm just gonna flip this over to this other side right now. And you can see that beautiful golden crispy oh, yeah. skin, you know? Good looking fish there. Yeah. So there we have our risotto. And then here, we're gonna go one piece, two piece. I'm actually just gonna use a little bit I love uh, using everything. So I know for a fact that in this oil, there's beautiful fish flavors, you know? Right. So I'm just gonna throw in a touch of butter there. A little bit more of this cold pressed canola oil. And that's just gonna go around. Oh. And then we're gonna go a little balsamic. And that's it. Perfect. That looks okay. lovely. Well, yeah. thank you so much again yeah, for uh, being part of the show. Yeah. And uh, we're going to bring Lorena and JC back to, yeah. uh, to try your meals. Hopefully so you enjoy. So yes, thanks. You're welcome. So Lorena and uh, JC, can you tell me a little bit more about this kitchen and how you, you've designed everything? Our kitchen is designed with our design team, which consists of us three, and we're missing Alyssa today, uh, and Cougar Custom Cabinets. And so they really help you. They go through everything, the floor plan, to make sure you get the right flow that you want with your kitchen. And you, your options are just limitless. You, you can do anything you want to do. Um, in this kitchen, we have a ton of pull-out storage to keep everything neatly tucked away. 
uh, we call it the chef's dream, so I don't know if Nathan can vouch for that later. Um, we have a huge industrial size fridge and freezer, which is perfect for families. The nice part is we do have a butler's pantry that comes right in from the garage, so you can bring your groceries in right into your fridge, right into your cupboards, and we want to make life as easy as we can for you in this Emerald Park home. So convenient. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about um, what lots you have available and what areas you're building in? Yes, we've got a great selection. When As soon as the maps come out, Gary gets in there, he picks the best lots, backing the green space, um, all of the things that people want and for the best price. And so we've got those all available for all our customers to get their dream home built. Perfect. And so now if uh, someone wanted to start building with you, what would you recommend? Like, how do they get started? Well, you have to decide where do you want to live. White City, Pilot Butte, Regina. This beautiful home is in the creeks. There's beautiful natural walking paths around here. So we love this area. So come in, pick the community, find the lot, and we design your house around that lot. Do you like the deck to be in the back so you want to have certain exposure? Do you like it bright and airy? Or do you like it quieter on a quieter street? Those are the kinds of things that before we even get started building, you got to get your location picked up. Perfect. And now you mentioned, I mean, obviously you have all of these beautiful, luxury, luxurious homes, but you also do just build a, a basic bungalow for someone if they want, right? Yes, we do have the reputation of building million dollar homes, which we absolutely love doing out on country residential estates. But the majority of our houses really are the three bedroom bungalows in the small communities and they're for families. That's what it's all about. Perfect, and now so how do people get a hold of you guys? Uh, you can always check us out on our website. We have um, a ton of social media platforms to give you your ideas when you're looking for what you'd like in your home. You can find us on Pinterest, House is really good, and always our Facebook page. Perfect. Well, I mean, this food looks delicious, so I think we should uh, start digging in. Um, so thanks again for joining us today on uh, Chefs and Show Homes. Thanks to Nathan and Avenue, and a thank you to Emerald Park Homes for having us today. We'll see you next time.